chapter 12, Mark 2 verses 23 to 28 and Luke 6 verses 1 to 5. One at that time Jesus went on the Sabbath day through the corn, and his disciples were in hung red, and began to pluck the ears of corn, and to eat. Two, but when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto him, Behold, thy disciples do that which is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath day. 3. But he said unto them, Have ye not read what David did, when he was in hung red, and they that were with him, for how he entered into the house of God, and did eat the showbread, which was not lawful for him to eat, neither for them which were with him, but only for the priests? 1 Samuel 21 verses 1 to 6 KJV Then came David to Nob to Ahimelech the priest, and Ahimelech was afraid at the meeting of David, and said unto him, Why art thou alone? and no man with thee? And David said unto Ahimelech the priest, The king hath commanded me a business, and hath said unto me, Let no man know anything of the business whereabout I send thee, and what I have commanded thee, and I have appointed my servants to such and such a place. Now therefore what is under thine hand? Give me five loaves of bread in mine hand, or what there is present. And the priest answered David, and said, There is no common bread under mine hand, but there is hallowed bread, if the young men have kept themselves at least from women. And David answered the priest, and said unto him, Of a truth women have been kept from us about these three days, since I came out, and the vessels of the young men are holy, and the bread is in a manner common, yea, though it were sanctified this day in the vessel. So, the priest gave him hallowed bread, for there was no bread there but the showbread that was taken from before the Lord to put hot bread in the day when it was taken away. Have ye not read what David did? Seven times in the Gospels Jesus asks the religious leaders this very same thing. This was sure to get a negative response from them as they were supposed to be the teachers of the law. Matthew 19 verse 4 KJV and he answered and said unto them, Have ye not read, that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? Matthew 22 verse 31 KJV But as touching the resurrection of the dead, have ye not read that which was spoken unto you by God, saying, Mark 12 verses 10 and 26 KJV And have ye not read the scripture, the stone which the builders rejected is become the head of the corner? And as touching the dead, that they rise, have ye not read in the book of Moses, how in the bush God spake unto him, saying, I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob? 5. Or have ye not read in the law, how that on the Sabbath days the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath, and are blameless? Have ye not read in the law, in Numbers 28 we read about the duties of the priest on the Sabbath day which is work. The priests were blameless because it was a good work. For example, Jesus healed on the Sabbath. These men were missing the intent of the law. Jesus asked them twice, Have ye not read? It was their job to read the law and the prophets. They preferred their own writings instead. 6. But I say unto you, that in this place is one greater than the temple. 7. But if ye had known what this meaneth, I will have mercy and not sacrifice, ye would not have condemned the guiltless. 8. For the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath day. 1. Greater than the temple, the temple was made for Jesus, in a greater way than it was made for Israel to have her sins atoned for there. He was their atonement, and he was the Lord of the temple. I will have mercy, and not sacrifice, Hosea 6 verse 6 KJV, for I desired mercy, and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. The Son of Man, this was a title for the Messiah slash Christ mentioned repeatedly in the book of Ezekiel. He was also the Lord of the Sabbath day. Jesus heals a man with a withered hand. Mark 3 verses 1 to 5 and Luke 6 verses 6 to 11. 9. And when he was departed thence, he went into their synagogue. 10. And, behold, there was a man which had his hand withered. And they asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath days? That they might accuse him. 11. And he said unto them, What man shall there be among you, that shall have one sheep? And if it fall into a pit on the Sabbath day, will he not lay hold on it, and lift it out? 12. How much then is a man better than a sheep? Wherefore it is lawful to do well on the Sabbath days. 
13. Then saith he to the man, Stretch forth thine hand. And he stretched it forth, and it was restored, whole like as the other. 14. Then the Pharisees went out and held a council against him, how they might destroy him. 15. But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from thence, and great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all, 16, and charged them that they should not make him known. And he healed them all. Jesus was preparing Israel to be a kingdom of priests in the future kingdom that he had promised in Exodus 19 verses 5 to 6 KJV. Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine, and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests, and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. No Jew could be a priest if they had any infirmities in the flesh according to Leviticus 21 verses 17 to 21 KJV, speak unto Aaron, saying, Whosoever he be of thy seed in their generations that hath any blemish, let him not approach to offer the bread of his God. For whatsoever man he be that hath a blemish, he shall not approach, a blind man, or a lame, or he that hath a flat nose, or anything superfluous, or a man that is broken-footed, or broken-handed, or crook-backed, or a dwarf, or that hath a blemish in his eye, or be scurvy, or scabbed, or hath his stones broken. No man that hath a blemish of the seed of Aaron the priest shall come nigh to offer the offerings of the Lord made by fire. He hath a blemish. He shall not come nigh to offer the bread of his God. Jesus did not fear them and hide from doing what he came to do. He healed them knowing full well that they would try to destroy him. 17 That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, 18 Behold my servant, whom I have chosen, my beloved, in whom my soul is well pleased, I will put my spirit upon him, and he shall shew judgment to the Gentiles. 19 He shall not strive, nor cry, neither shall any man hear his voice in the streets. 20 A bruised reed shall he not break, and smoking flax shall he not quench, till he send forth judgment unto victory. 21 And in his name shall the Gentiles trust. Isaiah 42 verses 1 to 4 KJV Behold my servant, whom I uphold, mine elect, in whom my soul delighteth, I have put my spirit upon him, he shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not cry, nor lift up nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed shall he not break, and the smoking flax shall he not quench he shall. Bring forth judgment unto truth. He shall not fail nor be discouraged, till he have set judgment in the earth, and the isles shall wait for his law. Jesus is God's, my, beloved. This word beloved is translated from Isaiah 42 verse 1 as the word elect here in verse 18. They mean the same thing. Jesus was chosen to be God's servant to die for Israel and all of mankind's sin. Whenever you find the word election or elect in the Bible, you will find what it is they are elected to do. Election has to do with service, not salvation. Jesus is God's elect, and we are in Christ today. We are elect because we are in Christ, and we are elected to serve him as members of his body, the church one possessed with the devil. In this story we find the boy as an example of the nation of Israel, in that Israel was cleansed many times but they kept getting worse with every rejection of God's prophets. The common people heard Jesus gladly and many of them recognized him as their future king, but the leadership of Israel refused him and denied that his power was from God. Jesus cast out a devil. Mark 3 verses 22 to 30 and Luke. 22 then was brought unto him one possessed with a devil, blind, and dumb, and he healed him insomuch that the blind and dumb both spake and saw. 23 and all the people were amazed, and said, Is not this the son of David? 24 but when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow doth not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub the prince of the devils. 25 And Jesus knew their thoughts, and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. 26 And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself, how shall then his kingdom stand? 
27, and if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges. 28, but if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. 29, or else how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house? 30, he that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. 31, wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. 32 And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him, but whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Beelzebub, the prince of the devils, Satan, the kingdom of God is come unto you, Jesus will be Israel's king one day, and he must cast out the strong man, Satan, by the Spirit of God before that kingdom can be established. The strong man's house, the strong man is Satan. The house is the house of Israel. Israel was Satan's lawful captive. Isaiah 49 verse 24 KJV Shall the prey be taken from the mighty, or the lawful captive delivered? The blasphemy against the Holy Ghost, the religious and political leaders of that generation were guilty of committing the blasphemy by claiming Jesus was not from God and that his powers were satanic. This is not a sin that a believer can commit today because we have already recognized the Holy Spirit's role in drawing us to Christ and is convicting us of our sin. It was Israel's spiritual leaders that committed the unpardonable sin here. All the people asked their leaders if Jesus was the son of David. Israel would pay dearly for this declaration of blasphemy as Christ clearly proves his deity in this chapter on numerous occasions to Israel's leaders. The world to come, the 1,000-year kingdom reign of Jesus Christ on the earth. 33 Either make the tree good, and his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt, and his fruit corrupt, for the tree is known by his fruit. 34 O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. 35 A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. 36 But I say unto you, that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. 37 For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. The Sign of the Prophet Jonas, Jonah. Luke 11 verses 29 to 32. 38 Then certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign from thee. 39 But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given to it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas, forty for his Jonas, was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. 41 The men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it, because they repented at the preaching of Jonas, and behold, a greater than Jonas is here. 42 The queen of the south shall rise up in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it, for she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon, and behold, a greater than Solomon is here. A tree is known by his fruit, a person is known by their works. O generation of vipers, over and over again Jesus condemns his generation for rejecting their king, and he even states that the Gentile Ninevites will rise up with the Queen of the South, also a Gentile, to judge that wicked generation. He would now begin to use parables to conceal things from those who were rebellious to God in Israel. Notice that three times in this chapter, in verses 6 and 41 to 42, that Jesus tells Israel that someone who is greater than the temple, Solomon or Jonah is here. A sign, a miracle. The temple has priests, Solomon was a king, and Jonah was a prophet, but Jesus is Israel's prophet, priest, and king. The unclean spirit mark in Luke 11 verses 24 to 26. 
43. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and findeth none. 44. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out, and when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. 45. Then goeth he, and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there, and the last state of that man is worse than the first. He walketh through dry places. This parable was directed at Israel, predicting her future destruction and dispersion for denying the work of the Holy Spirit and convincing the people of that generation that Jesus was the Christ. The man with a blind and dumb spirit had a divine appointment that day to be healed in front of those Pharisees, so that Jesus might pronounce judgment on Israel for their rejection of him, and to warn those around at that time that there was a cost for denying their Messiah. The last state of that man is worse than the first, Israel's state as a nation would become seven times worse than it was when Christ came sweeping Satan's devils from its people for their rejection of their king. They would become lomi in the book of Acts, not my people. Hosea 1 verse 9 KJV then said God, Call his name Lomi, for ye are not my people, and I will not be your God. 45 Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. Jesus said that Israel would be judged like a man who has seven times as many demons as he used to have for rejecting the truth that would have cleansed him in the first place. Jesus' mother and his brethren Mark 3 verses 31 to 35 and Luke 8 verses 19 to 21. 46 While he yet talked to the people, behold, his mother and his brethren stood without, desiring to speak with him. 47 Then one said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand without, desiring to speak with thee. 48 But he answered and said unto him that told him, Who is my mother? And who are my brethren? 49 And he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples, and said, Behold my mother and my brethren. 50 For whosoever shall do the will of my Father which is in heaven, the same as my brother, and sister, and mother. If Mary were a co-redeemer, as is claimed today without one shred of biblical support, then Jesus would never have talked to her in the way that he did here. Mary was a sinner just like you and I in need of salvation. His mother and his brethren stood without. Notice here that they were outside the house when Jesus was teaching inside. The house is a type of the house of Israel, and he would soon bring judgment to the Gentiles which are represented in scripture on many occasions by the sea. Whosoever shall do the will of my father, Jesus separated himself from his family as most of them were unbelievers with the exception of his mother. James, Jesus' half-brother would believe after his resurrection and become the pastor of the Jerusalem church. Acts 10 to 11, chapter 13. The kingdom of heaven parables, the parable of the sower, Mark 4 verses 1 to 20 and Luke 8 verses 4 to 15. Chapter 13 is the most unique chapter in the book of Matthew, and it has two subtle differences. Those differences are the location and the audience. One the same day went Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside. Two and great multitudes were gathered together unto him, so that he went into a ship and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. The same day is a reference to the Sabbath day as seen in the preceding chapter. When Jesus exited the house, it was symbolic of the blindness of the house of Israel to him and his words. When Jesus out of the house, Jesus went out of the house and sat in a ship by the seashore and taught the multitudes in parables. Here Jesus is speaking to the nation of Israel as a whole. Jesus speaks the remaining three parables to his disciples inside the house. The house is synonymous with the believers in the house of Israel, aka the remnant, or the little flock as mentioned in Luke 12 verse 32 KJV, Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. 3 And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow, for and when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. He spake many things unto them in parables. Parables were used by Jesus to conceal things from his enemies. Verse 11. 
They were not meant to help ignorant people to understand his teachings better, but to conceal things from the wise. Seeds, the seeds represent the words of the kingdom. The sower is Jesus. Verse 19 below. The wayside, the wayside represents one type of hearer that doesn't understand the word. The fowls, they represent the wicked one who catches away the word sown in that person's heart. Verse 19 below. Five some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up, because they had no deepness of earth. Six, and when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. Stony places, these represented those that endure for a while, but they are offended by the word when persecution and tribulation come. Verses 20 to 21 below. Seven and some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. Thorns, these represent the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches that choke the word, and they become unfruitful. Verse 22 below. Eight but other fell into good ground, and brought forth fruit, some an hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Nine who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Good ground. These are those that make up the little flock of believers in Christ's day. Jesus then had a private conversation with his disciples and explains the parable to those who would appreciate it. Verse 23 Below 10 And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? 11 He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. 12. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance, but whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away even that he hath. 13. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seeing see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. Why speakest thou unto them in parables? The them in this verse are the whole nation of Israel which comprised believers and unbelievers. It is given unto you to know, the you in this verse is the little flock of believers in Israel, the remnant. Luke 12 verse 32 KJV Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. The mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, these mysteries have absolutely nothing to do with the church, the body of Christ. They concerned Israel's kingdom that was at hand. They seeing see not, and hearing they hear not, they have heard the good news of the kingdom and rejected it, so Jesus speaks to them in parables at this time because they had their chance and rejected it. 14 And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see and shall not perceive. 15 For this people's heart is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. Isaiah 6 verse 10 KJV Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and convert, and be healed. 16 But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. 17 For verily I say unto you, that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear and have not heard them. The listeners of this parable did not long for God's word or else they would have understood it. The prophets became prophets because the nation as a whole became blinded to the truth due to their sin. 18 Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. 19 When any one heareth the word of the kingdom, and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received seed by the wayside. The wicked one, this is speaking about the devil and his devils which are represented by the fowls. This is directed to both the religious leaders and the nation of Israel as a whole who did not understand what their very own Messiah was saying to them because they were blinded by their own traditions. 20 But he that received the seed into stony places, the same as he that heareth the word, and in non with joy receiveth it. 21 Yet hath he not root in himself, but dureth for a while. 
for when tribulation or persecution are he saith because of the word, by and by he is offended. But dureth, endureth, for a while, this verse should remind you of Jesus' future warning to the nation of Israel for the time of Jacob's trouble, the seven-year tribulation period, Matthew 24 verse 13, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. We do not have to endure unto the end today, because in the dispensation of grace we have eternal security as the Holy Spirit indwells us. Ephesians 4 verse 30 KJV And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. After the rapture, however, the Holy Spirit will come upon believers in the tribulation period as he did back at Pentecost. 22 He also that received seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word, and the care of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, choke the word, and he becometh unfruitful. The love of money is the root of all evil, and in the tribulation period many will take the mark of the beast to hold on to their precious belongings. If they quit following Christ with their whole heart, they will be eternally damned. Because the situation at that time will be so dire, disciples will need to bear fruit to those around them. The situation will not be a good excuse for bearing no fruit. 23 But he that receives seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word, and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit, and bringeth forth, some an hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Those that receive seed into the good ground are known as the remnant or the little flock that followed Christ during his earthly ministry. They are those that will follow him unto the end during the tribulation period. The gospel of the kingdom will again be preached during the tribulation period to the whole world before the millennial reign of Christ comes. Matthew 24 verse 14 KJV and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Were there any Gentiles in this story? No. You can't find one. It was not the time to reach the Gentiles yet. The message had to go to the Jews first, and it did. The tares and the wheat. 24 Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. 25 But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat, and went his way. 26 But when the blade was sprung up, and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. 27 So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tares? 28 He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? 29 But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. 30 Let both grow together until the harvest, and in the time of harvest I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. The kingdom of heaven is likened unto the seven parables in this chapter are about the future earthly kingdom reign of Christ that will last a thousand years. A man, the man in this parable is God's son, the seed is the word of the kingdom which produces the wheat, the field is the nation of Israel, the men that slept are the nation's leaders who were asleep on the job, the enemy is the devil. The field, this represents the world, not Israel. Matthew 13 verse 38 KJV The field is the world, the good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. In the first parable Jesus teaches the gospel of the kingdom to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and the seed is sown in their heart. Here the world is now hearing about the kingdom. Verse 38 below the good seed is not the gospel of the kingdom, but notice verse 38 below tells us that the good seed is now the children of the kingdom. They are the little flock that are sown throughout the world, the field. Verse 38. Gather ye together first the tares and bind them together to be burned. These are the non-believers in the flock. The wheat are the true believers. The servants of the householder are the prophets and the apostles of God. Matthew 3 verse 12 KJV 
whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. The harvest is the judgment, and the burning of the tares represent the lost being cast into hell. Even the order of the tares being bound to be burnt and the wheat being gathered into his barn are in line with how God will judge the wicked and the righteous when he comes to establish his kingdom. Matthew 3 verses 1 to 12 KJV In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair, and a leathern girdle about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. Then went out to him Jerusalem, and all Judea, and all the region round about Jordan, and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth therefore fruits meet for repentance, and think not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father, for I say unto you, that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees, therefore every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost, and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor, and gather his weed into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Luke 17 verses 34 to 37 KJV, I tell you, in that night there shall be two men in one bed, the one shall be taken, and the other shall be left. Two women shall be grinding together, the one shall be taken, and the other left. Two men shall be in the field, the one shall be taken, and the other left. And they answered and said unto him, Where Lord? And he said unto them, Wheresoever the body is, thither will the eagles be gathered together. Some use this portion of scripture to avoid church discipline. This has nothing to do with church discipline. It has to do with God sorting out the saved and the lost in the future. The wheat, the wheat represents the believers that believe the gospel of the kingdom and they enter into their kingdom. Everything in this parable about the future kingdom is figurative except one thing, the fire. It is literal and represents hell, and eventually the lake of fire. The parable of the mustard seed. 31 Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like to a grain of mustard seed, which a man took, and sowed in his field, 32 which indeed is the least of all seeds, but when it is grown, it is the greatest among herbs, and becometh a tree, so that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof. The kingdom of heaven, the future kingdom promised to Israel, which is set up after the 70th week of Daniel ends. Daniel 2 verse 44 And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom, which shall never be destroyed. A grain of mustard seed, this parable does not teach a worldwide revival in which the whole world becomes saved, the opposite is true. The field here is the world. The birds of the air, these birds are synonymous with the fowls in the parable of the sower that are lodging in the branches and corrupting it doctrinally. 33 Another parable spake he unto them, The kingdom of heaven is like unto leaven, which a woman took, and hid in three measures of meal, till the whole was leavened. The kingdom of heaven, the future kingdom promised to Israel that is set up after the 70th week of Daniel ends. Leaven, it is a type of sin in scripture, and it doesn't represent the gospel as some teach. It represents false doctrine in this parable. False doctrine is hidden by the wicked one, represented here by the woman, inside three measures of meal. If it is not dealt with, it will destroy the whole meal. The question remains, what does the meal represent? The meal is simply flour used to make a loaf of unleavened bread. Here we see the woman hiding the leaven in the bread because she doesn't want it to be seen by those who would partake of it. 
Leaven represents sin, so this woman is hiding something bad and something good to corrupt it. The meal is Israel unleavened until the devil comes along and corrupts her with leaven of false doctrine. Jesus was warning them publicly with a parable to beware of the leaven of the false teachers. He would later warn the disciples privately in a few chapters that they should beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Matthew 16 verses 6 to 12 KJV. Then Jesus said unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, It is because we have taken no bread. Which when Jesus perceived, he said unto them, O ye of little faith, why reason ye among yourselves, because ye have brought no bread? Do ye not yet understand, neither remember the five loaves of the five thousand, and how many baskets ye took up? Neither the seven loaves of the four thousand, and how many baskets ye took up? How is it that ye do not understand that I spake it not to you concerning bread, that ye should beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees? Then understood they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. 34 All these things spake Jesus unto the multitude in parables, and without a parable spake he not unto them. 35 That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables, I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. Psalm 78 verse 2 KJV I will open my mouth in a parable, I will utter dark sayings of old. 36 Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house, and his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. The tares of the field, they were concerned because the tares are destroyed in a literal fire, which is symbolic of hell. After they learn that the tares are the children of the devil, they understand the parable. 37 He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the son of man. 38 The field is the world, the good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked. 1. 39 The enemy that sowed them is the devil, the harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. 40 As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. 41 The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity. 42 And shall cast them into a furnace of fire, there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. 43 Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Here we have an interpretation of a parable depicting the lost being sent to hell and the righteous shining forth as the sun going into the millennial kingdom. 44 Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field, the which when a man hath found, he hideth, and for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath, and buyeth that field. The kingdom of heaven, the future kingdom promised to Israel, which is set up after the 70th week of Daniel ends. Daniel 2 verse 44 And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom, which shall never be destroyed. Treasure hid in a field, the man here is the remnant in Israel that finds and receives the truth about the kingdom. He gives all that he has to possess the truth represented by the treasure. This is a kingdom truth, it is not for the dispensation of grace. Remember how these kingdom believers sold all that they had and followed Christ as the kingdom was still being offered to Israel? Jesus told his followers to sell all that they had and to come follow him. We are not under this same program today. We are not kingdom saints. We are a part of the body of Christ, the church, which is a totally different program. 45 again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man, seeking goodly pearls. 46 who, when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. The kingdom of heaven, the future kingdom promised to Israel, which is set up after the 70th week of Daniel. Ends. Daniel 2 verse 44 And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom, which shall never be destroyed. Jesus was seeking the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Jesus, the merchant man, 
did not seek goodly oysters. He was seeking goodly pearls. The meat surrounding the oyster was unclean. The one pearl of great price represented believing Jews. It was the little flock of believers that followed him. There are 12 gates of solid pearl in the city of New Jerusalem. Revelation 21 verse 21 and the 12 gates were 12 pearls. Every several gate was of one pearl and the street of the city was pure gold as it were transparent glass. 47 again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind, 48 which, when it was full, they drew to shore and sat down and gathered the good into vessels, but cast the bad away. 49 so shall it be at the end of the world, the angels shall come forth and sever the wicked from among the just, 50 and shall cast them into the furnace of fire, there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. The kingdom of heaven is like unto a net. Here we have a picture of the end of the age when angels will gather the bad slash unbeliever out of the earth and they will cast them into hell. That was cast into the sea. The sea represents the Gentile nations in the last days. The every kind is a reference to Gentiles as well that will be judged at the end of the millennial kingdom and gathered the good into vessels, into the kingdom. The angels shall sever the wicked from among the just. Matthew 24 verse 40 Then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken, and the other is left. 51 Jesus saith unto them, Have ye understood all these things? They say unto him, Yeah, Lord. 52 Then said he unto them, Therefore every scribe which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is an householder, which bringeth forth out of his treasure things new and old. An householder, God over the house of Israel. The kingdom of heaven, the future kingdom promised to Israel, which is set up after the 70th week of Daniel ends. Daniel 2 verse 44 And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom, which shall never be destroyed. Things new and old, these are the spiritual truths regarding what God has already done and what he is doing anew during the tribulation period and in his kingdom. It is not referring to the church. The church is not even mentioned for another four chapters, and it is mentioned in a future sense. Matthew 16 verse 18 KJV And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. 53 And it came to pass, that when Jesus had finished these parables, he departed thence. 54 And when he was come into his own country, he taught them in their synagogue, insomuch that they were astonished, and said, Whence hath this man this wisdom, and these mighty works? 55 Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary? And his brethren, James, and Hoses, and Simon, and Judas? 56 And his sisters, are they not all with us? Whence then hath this man all these things? 57 And they were offended in him. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, save in his own country, and in his own house. 58 And he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Jesus then returned to his adopted hometown of Capernaum and the people wondered how he could know so much having been raised a carpenter. Many in his family, with the exception of his mother, did not believe on him until after his resurrection. Joseph and Mary had numerous children that were Jesus' half-brothers and sisters. V. 55 above. Chapter 14. The death of John the Baptist Mark 6 verses 14 to 29 and Luke. 1. At that time Herod the Tetrarch heard of the fame of Jesus, 2. And said unto his servants, This is John the Baptist. He is risen from the dead, and therefore mighty works do shew forth themselves in him. Herod the Tetrarch, a Tetrarch was a leader of one-fourth of a country. His father, Herod the Great, was a king earlier. Herod believed some of the teachings as he was part Jewish, and he believed that miracles would happen in the times surrounding Israel's future millennial kingdom. 3. For Herod had laid hold on John, and bound him, and put him in prison for Herodias' sake, his brother Philip's wife. For for John had said unto him, It is not lawful for thee to have her. Leviticus 18 verse 16 KJV 
Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy brother's wife, it is thy brother's nakedness. 5. And when he would have put him to death, he feared the multitude, because they counted him as a prophet. 6. But when Herod's birthday was kept, the daughter of Herodias danced before them and pleased Herod. 7. Whereupon he promised with an oath to give her whatsoever she would ask. 8. And she, being before instructed of her mother, said, Give me here John Baptist's head in a charger. 9. And the king was very sorry, nevertheless, for the oath's sake, and them which sat with them at meat, he commanded it to be given her. 10. And he sent, and beheaded John in prison. 11. And his head was brought in a charger and given to the damsel, and she brought it to her mother. 12. And his disciples came, and took up the body, and buried it, and went and told Jesus. 13. When Jesus heard of it, he departed thence by ship into a desert place apart, and when the people had heard thereof, they followed him on foot out of the cities. John the Baptist went to Abraham's bosom, paradise, when he died. Luke 16 verse 23 KJV And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. He did not go to heaven. Saints in this dispensation of grace go immediately to be with Christ in heaven upon their death. 2 Corinthians 5, 6 and 8 A desert place apart, a deserted place away from the villages where Jesus could be alone. Now the forerunner of the Messiah was dead, and Jesus would now enter into a new phase of his earthly ministry. Jesus feeds 5,000 Mark 6 verses 30 to 44, Luke 9 verses 10 to 17 and John 6 verses 1 to 15. 14 And Jesus went forth, and saw a great multitude, and was moved with compassion toward them, and he healed their sick. Matthew 8 verses 16 to 17 KJV when the even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word, and healed all that were sick, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Himself took our infirmities, and bare our sicknesses. Isaiah 53 verse 4 KJV, Surely he hath borne our griefs, and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. 15. And when it was evening, his disciples came to him, saying, This is a desert place, and the time is now past. Send the multitude away, that they may go into the villages, and buy themselves vills. 16. But Jesus said unto them, They need not depart, give ye them to eat. 17. And they say unto him, We have here but five loaves, and two fishes. 18. He said, Bring them hither to me. 19 And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass, and took the five loaves, and the two fishes, and looking up to heaven, he blessed, and brake, and gave the loaves to his disciples, and the disciples to the multitude. 20 And they did all eat, and were filled, and they took up of the fragments that remained twelve baskets full. 21 And they that had eaten were about five thousand men, beside women and children. The time is now past meant that it was late, and the people were hungry. They took up of the fragments that remained twelve baskets full. Twelve is the number of Israel. There was one basket of fragments for each of the twelve apostles. After the children of Israel are fed, then the Gentiles can eat from the fragments that remain. See the story in Matthew 15 verses 21 to 28 concerning God's plan to give the word, bread, to the Gentiles after the Jews are fed first, after they hear it. During the tribulation period God will feed the little flock of kingdom believers in a place prepared for them in the wilderness. Revelation 12 verse 6 KJV And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she hath a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days. During the kingdom people will not go hungry for Jesus will provide for those that love him and have plenty left over. Revelation 7 verse 16 KJV They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. Jesus walks on the water. Mark 6 verses 45 to 52 
22 And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side, while he sent the multitudes away. 23 And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray, and when the evening was come, he was there alone. 24 But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him, to constrain someone was to order them to do something. He went up into a mountain apart to pray. Mountains in scripture are types of kingdoms. Jesus went apart, away, to pray. Before the kingdom comes, Jesus will deliver the remnant of believers in Israel during their darkest hour, the time of Jacob's trouble. Jeremiah 30 verse 7 KJV Alas! For that day is great, so that none is like it, it is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. In the midst of the sea, the sea is a type of Gentile lands. Israel will be in captivity in Gentile lands during the time of Jacob's trouble, but God will come back and deliver them out of it. Jeremiah 30 verse 7 KJV 25 And in the fourth watch of the night Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. The fourth watch, the final watch of the night, 3 a.m., 6 a.m. Jesus manifests some of the power he possesses to his disciples which he will use during his future kingdom to rule and reign over the earth. The night, the tribulation period, the time of Jacob's trouble, is often referred to as a time of great darkness. Isaiah 9 verse 2 KJV The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light, they that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. Isaiah 60 verse 2 KJV 4 Behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. 26 And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit, and they cried out for fear. 27 But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. It is a spirit, when Jesus returns every eye will see him, and many will cry out for fear. Revelation 6 verses 14 to 17 KJV and the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb, for the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? 28 And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. 29 And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. 30 But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. 31 And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand, and caught him, and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? 32 And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. 33 Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth thou art the Son of God. Thou art the Son of God. This is the testimony that all of Israel had to believe to be a part of the little flock, church, that would enter into their kingdom. Matthew 16 verses 13 to 20 KJV When Jesus came into the coasts of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I the Son of Man am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the 
keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then charged he his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. Luke 12 verse 32 KJV, Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Jesus has power over the elements, and during his kingdom reign he will use this power globally to bless the faithful. He will also use his power to punish those that don't come to Jerusalem to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. He will bring plagues upon them and withhold the rain from them as well. Zechariah 14 verse 17 KJV And it shall be, that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. Jesus heals at Genesaret. Mark 6 verses 53 to 56. 34 And when they were gone over, they came into the land of Genesaret. 35 And when the men of that place had knowledge of him, they sent out into all that country round about, and brought unto him all that were diseased. 36 And besought him that they might only touch the hem of his garment, and as many as touched were made perfectly whole. The hem of his garment, this was a teaching that would be fulfilled by the Messiah which said, Malachi 4 verse 2 But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings. The wings in Malachi refer to the hem, or border of Jesus' garments. Numbers 1538 translates the same word for wings as borders. Jesus healed all in Israel that came to him because the nation is to become a kingdom of priests, and her people could not have any infirmities in her flesh. Exodus 19 verses 5 to 6 KJV Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine, and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests, and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Leviticus 21 verses 17 to 23 KJV Speak unto Aaron, saying, Whosoever he be of thy seed in their generations that hath any blemish, let him not approach to. Offer the bread of his God. For whatsoever man he be that hath a blemish, he shall not approach, a blind man, or a lame, or he that hath a flat nose, or anything superfluous, or a man that is broken-footed, or broken-handed, or crook-backed, or a dwarf, or that hath a blemish in his eye, or be scurvy, or scabbed, or hath his stones broken. No man that hath a blemish of the seed of Aaron the priest shall come nigh to offer the offerings of the Lord made by fire. He hath a blemish. He shall not come nigh to offer the bread of his God. He shall eat the bread of his God, both of the most holy and of the holy. Only he shall not go in unto the veil, nor come nigh unto the altar, because he hath a blemish, that he profane not my sanctuaries, for I the Lord do sanctify them.